No, right. How far will I go? I don't know. I, I'm still enjoying myself. So I think that's a good sign. So let's do a, let's do a two more. A couple more. We're on number 10 now. Natural leadership is by example and balanced patterns. Resisting natural progress creates conflicts which are revealed as internal or external disturbances. More is accomplished by directing natural patterns than by forcefully changing the course of a river. All right, unpacking this is a lot of work and hearing me and not being able to read it probably makes it a lot harder. Let me just read the whole thing again. Natural leadership is by example and balanced patterns. Let's read that one line again. Natural leadership is by example and balanced patterns. Okay? That makes sense. Like a parent animal. Next, resisting natural progress. Hmm, what the heck is this? Like learning to walk, maybe? Resisting natural progress creates conflicts which are revealed as internal or external disturbances. Ew. Like, if you were trying not to walk, then it would seem like maybe you had mental problems on the inside or whether there was an external problem, like your legs had, were broken. See? So that's resisting natural progress. And so now you got to look for what's wrong. And maybe, there's not, maybe there isn't anything wrong, but you got to get... So anyway, interesting. More is accomplished by directing natural patterns. Directing, not creating or directing natural patterns. Numbers the natural patterns there, you're just kind of urging it somewhere. Then by forcefully changing the course of a river. Yeah, that's not urging. <laughs> Gotta build a dam. So yes, so, okay, so more is accomplished by just gentle, I guess, gentle pushes. And the same with pe teaching people characters. And that's so true. Um, I was trying to help somebody the other day who's got a, a very bad mental problem. He, uh, I, I teach the mind. Now, in psychology, let's get away from the soul thing entirely. <clears throat> in, in, in your mind, I see that we have, and this goes back to my San Diego State University days. Um, I believe that the mind has a, it's kind of like the subconscious and the conscious. Okay, we all agree on that. But I believe that there's actually two characters or IDs or egos there. The subconscious is very childlike and um, trusting and non-judgmental and just believes everything. And then the conscious mind is scrutinizing and can be everything from trusting to not trusting, but it still makes the decision. It's like a soldier or a policeman. So it's protecting the subconscious too. So when a person watches horror movies, the sub, the conscious mind has decided, okay, I'll get out of the way and let you watch this because it makes you excited or gives you some emotion or just, you know, creates chemical hormones, you know, that you transmit when you have fear. So unfortunately, that's not a wise decision for this guy to let this kid watch the horror movies and get scared feel those emotions and get those adrenaline rushes. So anyway, so I believe the mind has two different points. I, that was one of my examples. But anyway, this person has a real problem with that because the little guy runs the ship and the, this person has almost no say in anything. It's, it's very, it's really, it's amazing. It's, that's why some people think this person is maybe retarded because it's the, the kid mind that talks. And the kid mind talks like a little kid and says, really? five-year-old type of things. So people think this guy must be retarded. But he's not. He's got a conscious mind that's very smart. Very smart. He can do, but for some reason, he's shut down and lets this little kid take over. And, and in, his, in his overall life, we see that from backing up and looking at it, and we see that he's totally like, his parents just like gave up trying to teach him, and he became a total drug addict and has no... No, soup, no, no ability to control or control himself. <laughs> so the, what the little issue in the brain became the bigger issue in life. And you got somebody who's, yeah. Okay, so, so 
Anyway, so that you can see how some people are homeless, but his neighbor really doesn't have mental problems. He just has, men, well, he has a men, very bad mental problem, but he actually could fix it if he could just learn how to govern himself. If he could be more self-governing, he could be a decent person, but he's given up and let the little kid take over. Wow, did I get off course there? So here we go. Let's read this thing again, and then I'm going to blast down the page. And uh, I'm not going to answer any of these questions. Because these would actually, it would depend on which business I'm talking about, how I would answer these questions. Okay, number 10 of uh, my book, which is called Tao of Taoism, based on Lao Tzu, the original author, you know, a couple hundred years before Christ, uh, uh, writing his book, the Tao Te Ching, or Book of Changes, or Book of All Changes, or the book of how everything is always changing. Here we go, number 10. Natural leadership is by example and balanced patterns. That's the natural kind. Resisting natural progress creates conflicts which are revealed as internal or external disturbances. And that's where that guy's at. More is accomplished by directing natural patterns than by forcefully changing <clears throat> the course of a river. And unfortunately, the little kid screaming seemed like the river, but wasn't. Okay, here we go. Do you enjoy leadership responsibilities? Do you enjoy leadership responsibilities? Remember, these are your answers. Don't answer what you think you're supposed to answer. Forget that, okay? Don't forget, this is not about the right answer. Nobody else is even ever supposed to see this, okay? Unless you want to share it with them, which is fine. But this is only for you, so you can look at you. Here we go. Do you enjoy leadership responsibilities? What are your basic rules when being a leader? Maybe you're a bad leader, so you might have really bad rules, but the fact is, if you are, you're going to make rules. In fact, the bad readers, leaders make the most rules. But here we go. What are your basic rules when being a leader? How do you enforce your rules? How do you enforce your rules? What examples do you set for others to follow? What example do you set for others to follow. When do people tend not to follow you or disagree with you? When do people tend not to follow you or disagree with you? What are your balanced patterns that aid in leading others? That's a little more interesting. What are your balanced patterns your balanced patterns that aid in leading others. What problems do you consistently find in others? What problems do you consistently find in others? How do you influence other people to follow? How do you influence other people to follow? How do you reward those who do follow you? How do you reward those who do follow you? When people or jobs create difficulties and tension for you, how do you handle stress? When people or jobs create difficulties for you and tension, how do you handle the stress? How patient are you with those who take advantage of you don't appreciate you. How patient are you with those who take advantage of you or don't appreciate you? And you can talk about how impatient you are. Get the, big, get the topic. <clears throat> okay. Do you enjoy caring for other persons? I'm not saying will you. Remember, think of the truth. Answer truthfully. That's the most important thing. If you lie to yourself, then gosh, how can you ever get smart? Do you enjoy caring for other persons? Do you inquire as to other people's problems and try to help on a daily basis? Do you inquire as to other people's problems and try to help them on a daily basis? How do you help people? How do you help people? 
Do you mind your own business and stay out of other people's affairs? Do you mind your own business and stay out of other people's affairs? Do you prefer to stay out of your affairs and private matters? Oh, do you prefer to bail out? Ah, I don't like my private No, I read that wrong. Do you prefer other people stay out of your private affairs? So, I, do you have privacy issues? Okay, what are they? Are you usually reluctant to discuss your personal problems? And why? Are you usually reluctant to discuss your personal problems? And why? That's a big answer. You might not get it. You know, it might be, oh, my dad was that way. It actually might be, even go farther back than that. So. Do you believe your privacy is very important? And why? There you go. That's the last question here. Other than my Shifu suggestions, which... I need your answer to give you a suggestion. So anyway, do you believe your privacy is very important and why? That's an interesting concept. I wonder if I could actually use this as a counseling book. I've never thought of making money off it that way. I sell it to my students and then just and they bring it in and I talk to them for free. So, uh, but what if I was on the internet somehow respond to these pages by charge or something? I got to work for free forever. I've been working for free for 30 years. Okay. Oh, I got to stop. 11 minutes.